The Symbolism of the Orion Constellation Orion is a prominent constellation located on the celestial equator. It is one of the 48 Greek constellations listed by Ptolemy in the Almagest. It is visible throughout the world and is one of the most conspicuous and recognisable constellations in the night sky. Orion is not an exceptionally large constellation. It ranks only 26th in size, but the brilliance of its stars gives it the illusion of being much larger. Despite being called Orion in Western astronomy, it has many other names and a wealth of pictorial representations, leading many people to believe it has no common symbolic meaning. But there is value in studying Orion for this very reason, lest we forget how constellations evolved. First, however, we need to remind ourselves of what we actually mean by a constellation. Understanding the layers in a constellation. Look up at the night sky and there are no star patterns. Indeed, on a clear night, all you can see are millions of stars. But man needed to navigate on land and on sea, and he had no maps, and in the distant past could not read or write. So he used the sky as a blackboard, and he created star patterns, joining up the brighter stars and nebula to create a pattern that could be recognised and used in navigation. But as more star patterns were drawn, it was realised that something had to be done to make them easier to remember, and a picture was retrofitted to the pattern. If one looks back over time, you will find all sorts of quite wonderful pictures. All different for the same star pattern. But the Chinese, Indian, Greek, Babylonian and Egyptian systems all started from different star patterns. They carved up the sky in different ways, using different star groupings. And this is the Chinese Tzu Tzu star chart from the 13th century. Compare this with a star map using the Ptolemaic Greek star patterns and overlaid pictures and there is no correlation between the two. Thus, these early star maps worked until one crossed into an area with a different system. And this is the Jantamanta Observatory in Jaipur, India. Then it no longer worked. But as people travelled farther afield, it needed to work. And this is a Chinese chart. And be understood by everyone. And this is why systems gradually became standardised under the International Astronomical Union. Countries in dark green are members, countries in red are suspended, countries in blue are observers, and countries in light green are classified as interim. But in a sky this large, and one that moreover changed by the hour and the season, Finding the constellations was also very difficult, and so allegories arose that linked constellations together or described their movement in story form. And this is the death of Orion, meaning that every system will have its own myths and stories, and there is no use trying to reconcile them. They will never reconcile because they are different systems. We will start with the Greek system, because this is the one on which 
present-day Orion is based. We will then briefly glance at the Indian and Chinese systems to show the difference. The Greek system The Greeks were particularly good at both providing names and pictures for their constellations, as well as devising myths that link them together. Their myths had the added advantage of accounting for the changes that happened over the days and seasons. For example, Orion is most visible in the evening sky from January to April, winter in the Northern Hemisphere. Furthermore, the Orion constellation appears to chase the Pleiades star cluster. How to make this memorable? The Greeks invented a story whereby the god Orion chases the seven sisters, the Pleiades, across the sky, with the Pleiades being protected by Taurus the bull. Over time, one of the seven sisters who formed the Pleiades was singled out, Merope, but she always repelled him escaped, and then other sky events began to be included. Orion, like all the stars and constellations, shifts westward as the seasons pass. As such, it spends some portion of each year hidden by the sun's glare, blinded by the sun. So using some artistic license, the Greeks decided that the story could be extended, and this is Merope being alluring. They decided that Orion in a drunken stupor would rape Merope, and her enraged father would inflict him with blindness. The story then continues by having an oracle tell Orion that to gain his sight back, he would need to travel east and let the rays of the sun strike his eyes. Even Orion's tragic ending is based on the stars, at least one of the endings, because he had several. Greek myth has him stepping on Scorpius, the scorpion. But the story goes, when the gods commemorated him by placing him in the sky, Scorpius was placed on the opposite side of the sky, so Orion would never be hurt by it again. And as you can see, in this hand-drawn map, Orion in the Northern Hemisphere, while Scorpius is in the Southern. Orion is bordered in the current system by Taurus to the Northwest, Eridanus to the Southwest, Lepus to the South, Monoceros to the East, and Gemini to the northeast. The closeness of Orion to Gemini is described in the myth of Apollo, golden chariot, and Artemis, girl with gold sash, who were designated the twins in this case. In this myth, Artemis falls in love with Orion, but Artemis is deceived into shooting Orion by Apollo, a brother, at which point Orion dies. That even those who ask, is Orion really Hercules in another guise? And it might seem so in some depictions, as he is shown with the Nemean lion. Even more confusing in this depiction, we have him attempting one of the labours of Heracles, which was to catch the Cretan bull, using the pelt of the Nemean lion. The Indian system. Indians used many constellations to help them with their weather. The monsoon rains are key to an Indian. Huge famines have resulted when the monsoons were late or worse did not come. Orion is not a Greek god in India. It is the demon Veritra in the guise of an antelope. Mariga, bringer of drought, blocked watercourses, and famine. At the commencement of the rainy season, when the constellation is overhead, great storm clouds billow up at dusk, and the sound of thunder is heard. 
and the Rigveda says that Indra is killing Varitra. Indra is associated with the sky, lightning, weather, thunder, storms, rains, river flows and war. In essence, when this happens, the star pattern in a certain position and the sound of thunder, this hopefully heralds the start of the rainy season. But why a demon in the shape of an antelope? The Greeks once had a very influential community in India, the Yavana, and contributed a great deal of astrology and astronomy. This map shows the territories conquered by the Dharma, according to Major Rock Edict number 13 of Ashoka, 260 BC. In Greek mythology, the Serenian hind took the form of an enormous female deer, larger than a bull, with golden antlers like a stag, hooves of bronze or brass, and a dappled hide. It snorted fire so thunder and lightning in one animal, although Hercules's third labour was to bring it back alive. The Chinese System Whilst Ptolemy is known for his star catalogue in the Almagest, Chen Tzu AD 220 to 280, compiled a list of over 1400 stars. He collated observations by Chinese astronomers who worked several centuries before him, Shi Zhen and Gan Dei, who both lived around 300 BC, and Wu Xian or Wu Xian. Shi Shen and his school is credited with 93 constellations, Gande with 118 and Wu Shen with 44, giving a total of 255 constellations. And even today, the International Astronomical Union only have 88. In addition to these 255 star groups and predating them, were 28 ancient divisions of the ecliptic, known as Shu, formerly transliterated as Hushu, or mansions. These were vertical strips of sky that acted as markers for following the nightly progress of the moon as it orbited the earth each month. Orion was in one of these 28 lunar mansions, or Shu, it is known as Shen, literally meaning three, the stars of Orion's belt. The 28 mansions are part of the Chinese system, and they describe the movement of the moon through a sidereal month. Ancient Chinese astronomers further divided the sky ecliptic into four regions, collectively known as the four symbols, the azure dragon on the east, the black tortoise on the north, white tiger on the west, and the vermilion bird on the south. Each region contains seven mansions, making a total of 28 mansions. And the white tiger of the west, by who, is associated with autumn. It was formed from stars in the present-day Greek-based Andromeda, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, and Orion constellations. But the Chinese system does not mention Orion, because Orion is a Ptolemaic constellation. It specifies the White Tiger and Shen, the three stars of Orion's belt, not the rest of the Orion constellation. Symbolism is culture and time-specific. The Greeks produced some very memorable myths and stories, perhaps more memorable because the stories were so violent and tragic. And there is reason to believe that the Orion constellation 
for the Greeks, for a time, represented the hero archetype, particularly Heracles, also known as Hercules, shown here with the skin of the Nemean lion. But you may say, there is already a Hercules. Why two constellations? And the reason is that the earliest Greek references to the Hercules constellation do not refer to it as Hercules, but the Neela, Aratus, right there in its Draco's orbit wheels a phantom form, like to a man that strives at a task, that sign no man knows how to read clearly, nor what task he is bent, but men simply call him on his knees, the Neela. The modern 88 constellations of the International Astronomic Union show both Hercules and Orion, but whereas Hercules has been promoted to be Hercules rather than the Neela, Orion has been reduced to a hunter, sometimes with the sword and shield of the hero archetype and sometimes, as in this fresco from the Villa Farnese, Caprarola, Italy, with a red cloth, to attract the bull, which here is the constellation Taurus. But Orion's importance as a constellation can be judged by the fact it is mentioned in the oldest surviving works of Greek literature, which probably date back to the 7th or 8th century BC. In the works and days of Hesiod, Orion is a constellation, not a god, one whose rising and setting with the sun is used to reckon the year. Works and days is a didactic poem written around 700 BC. And in Homer's Iliad, Orion is described as a constellation. And the star Sirius is mentioned as his dog. The constellation is mentioned in Horace's Odes, Ode 3.27.18, Homer's Odyssey, Book 5, Line 283, and Iliad, and Virgil's Aeneid, Book 1, Line 535. It is further mentioned by Hyginus, Ovid in Fasti, Aratus and Eratosthenes. All the stories help people to remember the constellation and its movements in the sky. The Summary Orion has its own lesson to teach of what has been lost since the days when only the night sky was visible and its star patterns, along with a storyteller and people's imagination. Legendary BBC broadcaster Alistair Cook once said, I prefer radio to TV because the pictures are better. In the first place, it should help to bring home just how important the night sky was. To populations who relied on the stars for navigation, during hunting and migrating. And it shows how inventive and imaginative people were in those days, with no paper, no writing, only one's memory. Remembering star patterns wasn't just a pleasant pastime, it was life and death. No roads, no signposts, just the stars to guide you on hunting missions that could spell hunger for your family if you did not, and death for you if you became lost. The heroes may have been rough men, even cruel men, but they were also brave and fearless. May we honour their memory. <laughs>